Good morning, I'm Andrew Blakely and welcome to CCTV 55. This is the morning news report. In world news, a major breakthrough has been reached in the relationship between North Korea and, U and the United States. The United States has struck a groundbreaking deal with North Korea's new leader, Jin Kim Jong-un, the son of the former North Korean dictator Kim Jong-il. The new leader has agreed to stop testing nuclear missiles in exchange for food aid. The United States has agreed to send North Korea to a massive amount. They decided to agree. They decided to send North Korea a massive amount of food for its starving population if the communist state stops its nuclear testing and enrichment program. The United States will be working with South Korea in a spy program. Officials say that North Korea is still unpredictable, so the U.S. will be flying a high-altitude spy jet over the area to make sure the communist country doesn't try any tricks. North Korea has been known to break deals in the past after the food was delivered. In Syria, major unrest is still ongoing. For the past 26 days, Syrian forces supporting President Assadon have been shelling the capital city of Homs with artillery shells. Thousands of activists and freedom fighters have been trying to overthrow the current government. However, they have not been very successful. The Syrian government has, been, has cut off the water and electricity to the city and have been firing heavy artillery into many of the neighborhoods for the last few weeks. The head Syrian officials say that they plan to launch and launch an offensive that will send ground troops into the neighborhoods and crush the uprising U.S. President Barack Obama has urged the Syrian leader to back down on his violent approach to the protests. However, an unnamed Syrian government official told the Associated Press the areas would be cleansed without, within hours of their offensive. Talks between the U.S. and Syria are expected to continue. In national news, during the overnight hours of Tuesday into Wednesday morning, a huge storm producing numerous tornadoes swept across the upper Midwest, leaving a path of death and destruction. Around 5 a.m. in the morning of Wednesday, February 29th, a powerful tornado ripped through the town of Harrisburg, Illinois, leaving six dead and widespread damage. In Missouri, three people were killed when a tornado tore through the town of Buffalo. Other Others were injured as more tornadoes blew through other Missouri cities like Bran Branson and H Harveyville. That night, there were 16 confirmed tornadoes and 9 people were left dead. The tornado, which went through the town of Harrisburg, was rated as an F4 tornado. The National Weather Service is still assessing the damage from the other tornadoes. It is not, uh, it is not normal to see tornadoes during this time of the year so far north. Forecasters are saying that this year could be another above-average tornado year. In local news, according to the Kuhlman Times, any talk that the five-way race to win the Republican Party's nomination for Kuhlman County probate judge has been a contentious one might as well be hearsay following a candidate forum Tuesday that was heavy on praise for past and current Democratic leaders in the office. Candidates rarely strayed from the issues except when invoking the name of longtime Democratic probate judge Tom Burleson as a peerless example of public service or when generally agreeing on the overall effectiveness of the current Democratic incumbent Leah Patterson Lust. Also, with numerous industrial and retail projects announced over the past year, and more in the pike, the city of Kuma has been named one of the top sites for economic growth in the state and the nation. Kuma is number three on site selection's top U.S. micropoliticians for new and expanded facilities in 2011, behind only Statesville, Mooresville, North Carolina, and Wooster, Ohio. Kuma was selected from among 576 micropoli micropolitan communities in the U.S. with a population between 10,000 and 50,000. Our staff is widely excited about being number three and our goal next year is to be number one, number one which has never happened for an Alabama micropolitan, said Kuhlman Economic Development Agency Director Peggy Smith at a surprise announcement held at Terry Pine Country Club Wednesday night. 
The naming of this title is great for area publicity. Now to go slating with the weather. Thank you, Andrea. Well, in our CCTV 55 weather today, we do have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. If we take first of all a look at our current conditions outside right now. Uh, current conditions at this moment outside our studios here in downtown Coleman, we have 57 degrees with partly sunny skies, calm winds, a humidity of 44%, and a barometric pressure of 30.34 inches and falling. Now let's take a look at those national temperatures. National temperature map here showing 78 degrees in Miami, 63 in Atlanta, 73 in New Orleans, 53 in Dallas, and 27 degrees in Denver. Now taking a look at our, <coughs> excuse me, look at our national map, national surface map here showing this is a large storm right here that has developed. This is a low pressure over the upper Midwest of the country right now, bringing a cold front and a warm front. Now th this will be of interest over the next few days as this moves through, but I'll get to that in a moment. Let's take a look at our radar right now. Doppler 55 regional radar showing numerous scattered showers and thunderstorms across the uh, southern part of the southeast, southern Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, and South Carolina. A few scattered showers throughout Florida. But this will be changing over the next several hours. If we can take a look at our graphic real quick. Graphic here showing. Uh, we have major severe weather event uh, that could possibly be taking place tomorrow. We have the low pressure storm, which is going to be over Arkansas, parts of Missouri. That's going to be bringing a warm front across the area tomorrow morning, which could bring a threat of severe weather in the morning hours tomorrow, early tomorrow morning. And then later tomorrow afternoon and evening, we're going to have a resulting cold front coming through, which could bring another round of severe storms, and those could possibly be something we need to worry about. We have all modes of severe weather possible. As you see up there, damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes are all possible. Now the timing of this event uh, is still in question, but uh, we're going to be looking at it over the next several hours and take a look and see when it well, might be possibly coming through, get more accurate with it. But right now we do have a very large possibility of a widespread severe weather event. So uh, everybody, if you just please review with your family your severe weather plans because this could be a serious event um, at this point in time, it, it shows that this has been getting stronger over the past few days and the predictions have just gotten a little bit worse over the past few hours so we've been looking at this we think it's something that to take very seriously and I do just urge that everybody please go over your severe weather plans uh, schools may be released early tomorrow it is unsure at this time of what's going to happen so we're just going to be continuously monitoring this uh, for your safety now we're going to take a look at our five-day forecast right now uh, for today, we're going to have a nice high of 74 degrees, uh, partly cloudy skies, low of 58. For tomorrow, we're going to have a 80% chance of thunderstorms. Some could be severe, high of 75, a low of 45 degrees. And on Saturday, some scattered showers in the morning giving way to partly sunny skies in the afternoon. We're going to have a high of around 58 degrees, a low of 35. And on Sunday and Monday, Monday highs in the lower 60s, upper 50s and your lows are going to be in the mid-30s with mostly sunny skies. Now to tie it with sports and entertainment. Thanks, Gus. In recent sports, Kobe Bryant visited a neurologist Wednesday morning and has been symptom-free since late Tuesday afternoon after his nasal fracture and concussion suffered in two Sunday's NBA All-Star Game. According to team spokesman, Bryant passed a neurological a neurological exam, a baseline test for concussion management, as well as a stationary bike test and treadmill test while visiting with Dr. Vern Williams before heading to the Lakers practice facility to participate in on-court testing of a game of two-on-two -two monitored by the Lakers training staff. If Bryant passes the full contact basketball test and remains symptom-free, he could play in the Lakers game Wednesday night against the Minnesota Timberwolves at Staples Center. In local sports, Coleman High School student athlete Andrew Winfrey, who suffered severe injuries from a single vehicle accident last week, is in stable but serious condition after a week of intensive care at Huntsville Hospital. Please continue to pray for Andrew as he continues to recover. Also, Good Hope showed signs of a short memory Saturday at Wallace State by rebounding from one of the worst performances from the field with one of its best. The top-ranked Raiders, 31-1, uh, jumped out to a 45-19 lead by halftime and coasted in a physical second half to secure back-to-back -back Class 4A Northwest Regional titles 
with a 65-52 victory over area rival Princeville, 14-18. Saturday, Nina Mills could only watch her team play at the Tom Drake Coliseum last year after suffering an ACL injury. The, the All-State point guard got to join in on the postseason fun this time around, a sight that Michael Oldacker couldn't have been happier about. Unfortunately, the Lady Raiders lost last night in Birmingham to Andalusia High School 62-54 to put an end to their spectacular season. And on the entertainment front, former lead singer Davy Jones of the popular 1960s band The Monkees died of heart attack on Wednesday, February 29, 2012. He had a very successful career and was known worldwide for his talent and appearances on popular TV shows. He died at 66 years old. Alright, well that's it for today. Thank you all from watching from all of us here at CCTV 55. Have a great day.